Hey, what's up, YouTube? Kenny here, and uh, today we're going to actually take a little bit of a sidebar uh, before we get to technical analysis, and that's because I just want to talk about macro conditions a little bit, uh, talk about what I think is happening in the markets. It's because nobody knows, so you got to set up your own macro thesis. You got to think about how it is that you're going to set up your trades for the next coming weeks, months, etc. So, you know, uh, everybody in CNBC and their mother, especially Tom Lee, is calling for an everything rally here in September and then going to go ahead and call a very bearish October. That said, uh, if I was the market, if I was Mr. Market and I was going to cause you the most pain, that would mean that now would be a good time to buy protection. Now would be a good time to think about pulling back a little bit. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, and generally, maybe September will be really good to us. And that's because most retail, uh, most hedge fund managers are back in the trading seats, being a little bit more active, a lot more proactive. Uh, but really, you know, just want to talk about the charts and kind of how we're seeing it. We'll go over everything. It's just a technical analysis day, but I just figured I might want to uh, talk about how I'm seeing the market. So if you're new to this channel, Red Club Research is an independent research firm that does a lot of signal detection, looking for those anomalies in the noise. That's because we have a data analytics background. We also have a subsidiary that is uh, deals with space, space stocks. So if you like space stocks, go ahead and check out Launch Window Research. They have uh, a bunch of content there, Nathan and uh, team, a bunch of first year Harvard uh, students taking on that task and doing a really good job of uh, DD. Got a lot of interesting folks over there as well. So anyways, um, let's take a look at what I think of the markets today. And I think that this is like a good capstone for, uh, for what I feel uh, is happening right now. It's dangerous. Here's some data. Uh, honestly, right now, uh, we are doubling down on making sure that if the data doesn't fit, uh, don't use it. Like not overfitting our data. If there's things in no man's land, if things aren't on like very clean support or very clean resistance, then we're not playing around. Uh, and I know <laughs> you're probably thinking, Kenny, that was last month. This is the everything rally month. Yeah, I get that. Uh, and I'm not saying that we're not going to trade anything, but we're going to generally be tuned bullish here. Uh, but obviously we're going to be a little contrarian here. I don't want to pull too much off the table, but uh, we'll just take a look at some things that we're looking at. So if you're looking at the S&P, Here's the S&P, and it's doing the straight up thing. Uh, we are being lulled to sleep. So if you would have gotten long last year all the way until now and just kind of held, you would have been doing uh, absolutely amazing. So in fact, you know, let's just go back to January. I mean, gosh, where's January? Just like right here, right? Uh, right here. So January this year, I mean, we're up. What are we up, boys and girls? Uh, 18%. I mean, that's significant uh, coming off of V-shaped correction to here second year is generally pretty choppy we haven't seen the chop in fact we haven't seen any meaningful corrections um biggest correction no more than four percent uh and that's indeed not typical uh typical corrections 10 percent, right crashes 15 whatever but we're not in any of that territory we have been very smooth um so for those reasons i do think that you know we might be looking at some fragility here but uh I don't know. When we get lulled to sleep like this, as you can see, like the uh, intraday uh, movements here have been really, really tight, really, really coiled. Um, this was as, as, as kind of flash bang as we could and got eaten up really fast. So people are generally bullish here. Um, can't say one way or the other. Uh, but I mean, if you want to look at kind of the PE ratio as another story or another way to kind of think about how we should examine this story, then yeah, you, you see here 35.38, but, you know, uh, the deal here is really the story was, you know, it's coiling down, meaning um, you were getting better deals because uh, these companies brought forward a ton of earnings. And why is that? Um, that's because, you know, everybody has gotten much leaner. Everybody has figured out how to be recession proofed. And let's face it, you know, outside of the zombie companies who are getting bought up by the Fed, uh, the companies who are actually good and are actually successful became very lean and are doing really well right now. They've trimmed a ton of fat. Um, and so, you know, with that, it's kind of a, a kind of an indicator that people want to be kind of bullish. Another thing that you can look at, though, if you want to second take if if you look at Schiller PE though it tells a little different story so Schiller PE is adjusted for inflation and so with that story it's definitely doing the up thing uh, getting really toppy here 
and maybe this is the new norm and maybe this is how we uh, pull forward um, kind of earnings now because, you know, again, what other options do we have? Because if you look at um, the 10-year treasury uh, down, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can look at any of them, five-year down, you know, everything is just down. And if you want to look at real interest rates, just bleeding to the floor. So, I mean... With all that said, you know, you got to take a different approach to this. So maybe this is the new norm, uh, but that's what you're betting on. If you look at the S&P here too, this is the mark indicator looking for extreme exhaustion, trend exhaustion. That is basically it tries to map out whether uh, a trend is about to end or not. Nines are intermediate exhaustion. Thirteens are extreme exhaustion. It doesn't do a great job on the daily here uh, on the S&P, uh, but even on the daily, it's saying that it's going to correct pretty soon. In fact, this arrow, this red arrow down here is what they call a premium uh, sell setup. Uh, I think that's drawing off this nine right now. Uh, <laughs> and if anything, uh, if it's anything to be said with the past this year, at least everything has been about a 4% correction. So can definitely see a 4% correction before continuing this upside. A lot of folks calling for 460 this year. We're almost already there going into year's end. Uh, even if a 10% correction all the way down to 445 would be pretty uh, ideal, honestly, and very healthy. But we haven't seen anything like that. And again, I think that's a lot of, there is no alternative uh, at this point. So some of the kind of charts we're looking at, Bitcoin is uh, generally more bullish than I expected. If it crosses 54, um, it's going to be really important uh, spot for me to look at. Uh, but, you know, 54 is a, a line that uh, based on uh, some of the research that we're doing uh, in terms of volume metric data uh, and inflows, that should signal uh kind of at least at the bare minimum back a move back up to 60 or double top uh we're looking for a flush here actually we're looking for a flush to 30 and that's because of us just putting fractals against each other uh, so if that's the case then you know 30 at the bare minimum would be a nice little bounce and a healthy little correction uh, if we move from here uh i am going to be very very weary but you know this might be the big move who knows but i feel like you know in terms of pulling things forward uh bitcoin is still in its infancy it's still super nascent so uh use cases bound um not really where it needs to be to to really capture that full market so if, if people are that are this far into it and this have this much depth and that they're it's a super speculative market for sure obviously risk on asset here an asset class of its own at this point crypto uh, whether people think about it that way or not, it definitely is. Uh, so really just watching here, not really sure. Again, no man's land, not putting anything uh, substantial on it. Jameer, we were looking for it to, to really go up, and it's kind of uh, filled exactly what we thought it would fill. Uh, still holding on to support here. And again, the reason why we draw this um, kind of orange line here is to suggest where it is on this regression channel before pulling it forward and giving it what we call a recency bias. And so if we do pull it forward here, I mean, if you can see here, it's breaking underneath, uh, which means it might go back down to 1647. I'm generally in that camp. Uh, it's kind of weakening right here. But if we pull this regression channel forward, it has touched the regression channel and, and, and is about to bounce. So, I mean, this is um, should be significant. It has bounced off this trend. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm drawing here or what these are, these are regression channels. These are mathematical averages of the channel itself. So, you know, depending on how you draw it, depending on how you use it, it can be significant. But if we're just zooming out and just kind of taking a look at where we're at, uh, you know, 1647 was extremely uh, interesting interesting and intuitive for us. 18 was actually the line. Uh, and yeah, here it is, 18. But really, past that 1255, we've been calling for a while. And if it gets down that far, we're definitely loading the boat. But intraday range here, really, really tight. Uh, so it's really just looking for good. It, this is one of those charts that's looking for good news, but can't find it. Uh, and you really won't with uh, stocks like this, because um, again, this is a long term setup for us. But if you indeed think that we can get to 29 that's the trade that you want to kind of take here um 
you could position yourself for a trade, definitely a good risk to reward. But uh, at this point, a little bit far outstretched from where I would like to see it. If you would have taken it here at 18 or something like that, that would have been great. 1647, obviously the floor for stop. Uh, 1650, if you will. Uh, Caterpillar, um, a big blue chip loop stock uh, that we are in. And if you look at the simple moving averages, converging here uh, only one the 100 is still uh, far above so got to reach that 100 and got to do it really soon we don't want it to kind of meet us here we want to meet it up here up at about 220 so i mean this is actually kind of critical uh in terms of not critical for the play we do know that um you know blue chip loops are i mean gosh they're like 99 percent success rate but the thing is you know how much theta are we going to burn here especially for our options plays that we're, we were looking for some some really good v-shaped recoveries um that said i mean under a lot of pressure here still if we get a red day going into monday or tuesday we're definitely gonna have to um not close out but we'll uh go ahead and um roll our leaps uh and, and pull out the january we have a bunch of january anyways but you know the octobers will definitely have to turn to january if we don't get a good week here so we're looking for a really clean week we want to see strength if we see weakness on caterpillar anytime this week uh it's no bueno if we're talking about ford it's playing out like we said it's going to play out now uh you know we did escape this trade uh it took us a little bit too long a little bit too bullish on this uh, this trade macro wise um that said you know here uh definitely can pull down definitely can sink um so hey look at that it's ward uh man i don't know if i'm gonna blur that out or not i don't know what he said but basically ward is a director copywriter and he told me to pull my key light back <laughs> and so i don't look like i'm getting interrogated so shouts out to ward for giving me some uh tips but uh we pulled it back a little bit actually we just turned it and put on some other i don't know man it's it's all very complicated i wouldn't expect anybody to understand or care but i uh, just try to set it up so it looks more pleasant for you all really anyways yeah uh we definitely see ford here uh going down some more honestly uh this is if you can if you can get across 1330 then it could be a, a decent bullish run but right now there's nothing including the way of catalyst or macro conditions that would suggest that ford's going to do very well here so going into earnings looks like it might bleed back down to 1120 which wouldn't be terrible for the stock if you think about it overall because in january since january uh with pretty much all bad news uh the stock is now up 50 percent up at almost 90 percent at one point and this 90 percent uh was probably baking in perfection baking in uh, semiconductors and chips that were there that weren't there and it was probably baking in the Ford F-150 Lightning that was going to uh, obliterate sales. Uh, with none of that stuff happening, I can definitely see it coming back down to, to 1126, which is a decent floor, which also would be 27.95% year for the year. So that's not anything to sneeze at in terms of how much gains a, a stock or an equity can capture in a year. So definitely uh, interesting. AMD, uh, if you followed the last previous um, uh, video, essentially our AI pattern analysis to our Metis engine uh, picked up what we call cup and handle on the, I think the 15 minute chart. Essentially it said, uh, this is the cup, this is the handle, and then looking to shoot up here. Uh, in terms of where it thinks the target price is, it was calling 118 and a quarter-ish. Uh, and that was um, for us, eight out of eight um, in terms of the patterns it had already found uh, with AMD. So eight out of eight, good track record for AMD, good track record for the Metis engine. Hopefully it uh, it holds here, but I mean, like trade to 118 is pretty solid, pretty sensible. Um, we're going to go ahead and set it up and take that on Monday as well. Uh, hopefully we can get some, ideally we come in on Monday on the 15 minute chart, we get some undercut here. Uh, and it, well, yeah. And it's kind of kind of drew sideways a little bit today, so I can definitely see it happening. But we want to see some undercut. We want to see an undercut. We can't take this. See some undercut and a break over over 110 or 111. Breaks 111. That's our entry. We're not entering yet uh, because if it fails here, it can definitely fail. Cup and handle, by the way, uh, for us, back text it yourself. Cup and handle. 68% success rate. But that's with algorithmically relevant. Uh, uh, pattern analysis, not us just going, oh, look, that's a cup and handle. Oh, look, that's a cup and handle. Um, 
But you can actually do that. That's actually sensible because if your eye is trained to that one specific thing, uh, definitely something you could uh, take advantage of. OIH is looking. Um, it's looking all right. Uh, it's trying to make, uh, trying to fight for its life. But I'm not fully convinced that we're there yet. We're gonna have to see a really big day, really, really big day. That's the day, the hourly chart. I don't want. I don't want to get into the noise here, but I mean, we have a we had a strong V-shaped bounce off 165 and back up to 186. Macro, the macro themes, the macro thesis still aligns, so we want to see it just bust out and really make a surge to 200. We're gonna to have to see some strength this week, uh, especially in the September everything rally. If it doesn't stay strong, I don't want to see side reaction. I need to see real, real bullish strength. If not, we're gonna take our Januarys and then push them back uh, to June for sure. Tesla's actually struggling more than I thought it would. I thought it was going to run from here. I mean, we did get four days of run, but really, really tight coiling action right now. Uh, we have a double top situation coming up here. Um, but, I mean, for what it's worth, you know, the, this gap fill could definitely happen. Looking for a gap fill and a rejection uh, the next week. So something like this and then kind of pull back and then, then shoot up. That's generally typically a pretty solid kind of... Uh, kind of pattern, kind of, not pattern, kind of price action for Tesla uh, and stocks like this that are reaching like a double top. So still bullish on Tesla. Uh, I still think uh, retail is looking for good places to hide and Tesla is probably a great place for them to hide or at least they think so. Uh, I kind of think so as well. Neo is definitely a trade that we talked about on our uh, on our newsletter, so I'm not going to talk about that. It's uh, well written up in our uh, monthly newsletter. You can get the free version uh, that will come out next week, but uh, Patreons, obviously, you already have it. So that's the trade that we're looking at for NEO. In terms of BABA, uh, we've been calling this thing right uh, all the way through and through, and honestly, uh, with the weakness here, probably going to pull back down and revert to this mean uh, regression channel, which, you know, not for nothing. Um, I just don't think it's over yet. Like it's still fighting. It's not fully capitulated. Uh, you know, I definitely think there is a chance. And we're long Baba, so don't don't come at me like, oh my god, I thought like no, we are long Baba. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, there's definitely a chance that like it hits about 150, and that's a clean, clean line. That uh, I mean, we've seen it before, but you know, I feel like. I just feel like there's going to be one more piece of undercut that can kind of just slip everybody out and then like it should start running again. I don't know that we get the full V-shape recovery that we usually do. Like uh, for stocks like that, this get that get beating up this hard. Um, you know, you would expect, you know, a V-shape recovery if you're super bullish. But I don't know that we get that anymore. This is almost like an oil stocks thing. Uh, I, I think it might meander and make its way back up and it might take some time. But we're long. Uh, we're long for the long haul on this one this is in our no look investment portfolio so definitely something to consider here but um but yeah uh in terms of uh just a couple other ones we did look at root we did look at uh coupon coupon did make a move up but like we said before uh false breakout and back down so i mean it's doing everything that we thought it was going to do so let's go to the 15 minute chart to get more clarity remember last week we were like hey you know what the thing would be to do is to wait for it to spike up and then take take it down so like you get the spike uh, but we were looking more for about 32 i think uh, is what we we're calling but i mean it got to 3150 uh yeah that's where you should have gotten short and uh definitely rewarded if you did i know if you took the long trade you could have got some some price action too but six percent down today uh and definitely <laughs> i mean i wouldn't buy here uh would have went short here at 31 and a half uh didn't get in just because uh, we were had so many other plays on but that's definitely the play that i would have took there peloton doing exactly what we thought it was going to do uh doing the down thing here i'm still going down um, there's really no no sense in fighting this. I think this is a free uh, put down to 78. And if you look at like just valuations and the way that the market's trading and just kind of the, some of the conditions uh, relevant to the stock, uh, I think I think you can see it just move down and just just you know very healthy move down. I don't think that's unhealthy. I mean, yes, it's gonna hurt if you have a ton of shares, but 
uh, nothing nothing too uh, extraordinary. And then like let's look at charge point because interestingly enough, we called this bottom on the live stream. It did spike up uh, 15, 16%. Could have got that. Didn't hold, but we're still up here. Um, you know, the trade fails if we hit below 20. Honestly, if it hits 20, we'll take it for a trade. If it hits about 21, uh, we'll probably take it for a trade. So 21 will be our line. Take it for a trade and try, try to hope for another spike back up to 25, 26. Uh, but, you know, in the long term, if you're bullish on this stock, if you think that this is a good play, which I'm pretty neutral, but I'm going to get some exposure here. Um, man, this is a time to do it. I mean, I don't see a better time. I mean, even if it drops. Oh, man. You know, $10 is pre-SPAC. But I mean, this the revenues are good on charge points, so there's just no reason for it to get back to pre spac land. Um, you know, revenues are good, growth is healthy, so no real reason for it to be uh, going any lower than this is what I'm saying. So definitely looking for a capture here, and then support. Um, why are we talking about support? I don't know. It's like impossible to call, but red red candle after red candle after red candle red after red candle after red candle. Um, but you know, based on our analysis, when it comes to sentiment and trend exhaustion, uh, I don't even want to take a look at. Well, we can take a look at the demark, but I will tell you that you know um, our original kind of uh, research that we did is usually four four days after for sentiment k okay, one two three four and so this day should have been the move and because it's flat that means tomorrow should be the move so it's either uh one way or the other you should definitely this is the time um to make that decision it shouldn't be flat tomorrow tomorrow should should tell you which way it's going to go and if we do get a green day tomorrow you might want to be long uh on a trade this is only a trade uh i'm not speaking for the uh the conditions uh of the stock or, or the fundamental analysis. But if you're looking for a trade tomorrow, whatever direction it picks pre, pre-market, pre it's probably going to hold. Uh, just a thought. Hassan's doing the up thing. <laughs> you know, he said if he clears 80, man, oh, man, it's still going up. So it still has a good market cap here too, actually. It's not uh, – I don't want to say it's not overpriced. It's definitely overpriced for the kind of uh, multiples that you typically use on SaaS stocks. But, you know – terms of where we're going and the new paradigm shift, you know, all these work for home uh, kind of infrastructure, not infrastructure, but uh, software services are going to be very necessary to keeping your company alive. So definitely looking at Asan. Uh, don't want to take the trade yet, but if it bounces back to 80, we're going to be really bullish and trying to get this next, uh, next, next run here. So that's pretty much it. Anyways, hey, look, the sun went down uh, as we were talking. That's pretty cool. But uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, you know what to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Do your own thing. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.